Okay, so, so far we have talked about tangent lines, chords, central angles, minor arcs, major arcs, uh, and perpendicular bisectors. So an inscribed angle, let's uh, label this picture right here with the inscribed angle. The inscribed angle, and you can see them better on your paper than you can up here. I've got A, B, C, and O. The inscribed angle is angle A, B, C. Angle A, B, C is what we describe as the inscribed angle. And the arc that it intercepts, all I do is I just extend the lines and the arc that's in between those two lines is the intercepted arc. It kind of makes like a snow cone looking thing. Okay, so the intersected arc is arc AC. Here's the difference between a central angle and an inscribed angle. The inscribed angle has its vertex on the circle. The vertex B is on the circle. It's not in the circle. It's not on the center of the circle. It is on the circle. That is an inscribed angle. Um, the central angle here, this wasn't one of the questions, but let's just review that. AOC would be the central angle that corresponds um, to the arc AC. Okay, angle AOC would be the central angle for the arc AC. Now, there is a relationship that exists between the inscribed angles and the arcs they intersect. We know that central angles have the same measure as the arc. Central angles have the same measure as the arc. So this angle is the same as the arc. This angle, ABC, um, just in general, how does it look like it relates to the central angle? Bigger, smaller, the same? Smaller, okay? Inscribed angles are smaller than central angles, but there's actually a very specific relationship that exists. So on your... Okay, so we got to know there's two relationships. The central angles have the same measure as the intercepted arc. Inscribed angles are half the measure of the intercepted arc, okay? Um, so, let's use that property here. We've got a little diagram. They tell us that BD is a diameter of the circle, the center O, A, B, C, and D are on the circle. So, in part A, they tell us that the measure of arc AB, so from point A to point B along the circle, that arc has a measure of 100 degrees. And they ask us to find the measures of as many of the numbered angles as possible. So, uh, who has an idea of which angle we should label first? Taylor. Okay, is there an angle at O though? Not quite. It's close, but it's over here. The vertex is not actually on the point O. It would be nice, that would be a central angle, but we don't have an actual angle that exists at O. So how about one of the numbered angles, which one, there are actually two that we can label from the 100 degrees. One and three? Okay, here are a bunch of different stuff, okay? Okay, we don't have any parallel lines. Um, does A make a right angle? Yes, A does make a right angle. Okay, 1 and 8 together make a right angle. Yes, they do. Okay, because, hey, do you want to explain why 1 and 8 make a right angle? Okay. It is correct, but the reason why it's correct is because 
the big angle A, 1 and 8 together, would be the inscribed angle for that entire side from B to D. From B to D is 180 degrees. So 1 and 8 together would be 90. Okay, so let's focus on the 100 then. Okay, which two angles are inscribed angles for the arc A, B? <laughs> numbers, guys, numbers, numbers. Seven, seven is an inscribed angle for the arc A, B. Here's how we know. I got too much stuff on my picture, so I'm going to erase a little bit here so we can get a clean picture. All right, so from A to B, one way to intercept the arc A, B is using these two sides right here. Okay, those two segments right there intercept that arc, AB, so the angle that's created is angle 7. So that means angle 7 is 50 degrees. What other angle is also 50 degrees? 4. Okay, that's the other way that we can intercept this arc, is using these two sides. <coughs> So angle 7 and angle 4 are 50 degrees. Okay. Okay. Because inscribed angles are half the measure of the intercepted arc. Okay. Now, that's all we can label inside the circle right at this moment. We don't have enough information to do anything else inside the circle. What other part of the circle can we label? What arc, what minor arc can we label? Okay, yeah, from B to D, we can label that one. What else can we label? How can we label BC? DC. How can we label DC? Well, y'all said that we could label it, so what do we label it with? No, 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 no. Part B is separate. Part B is separate. We're only looking at part A right now. Only part A. Just part A. We only know that the measure of arc AB is 100 degrees. Not 100. No. AD is 80. Why is AD 80, Eli? Oh, it's the other part of the half of the circle, right? Okay, BD is a diameter. So the top half is 180, the bottom half is 180. Okay, so if we know AD is 80, what can we label? <coughs> okay, what did you say? Two, yes, angle two. Angle two intercepts that arc of 80. So angle two, and what other angle would be for that? Five. Okay, that one's, to me, that one's not as obvious. It helps when you really draw these segments to show, okay, those two lines intercept that arc as well. So 2 and 5 are 40 degrees. Is there anything else? It says to find the measures of as many of the numbered angles as possible. Do y'all see anything else that we can label? Well, yeah, we do have, you know, four little triangles in here, so it'd be great if we could, like, subtract from 180. But we only have one angle in each. I don't know that we can find any more angles. We, we, we can we can label this whole angle right here 
one and eight together is 90 degrees. But I don't think we can get any more specific. If there were a central angle, it gives me. Uh huh. Um, but nothing in this picture is symmetric. <laughs> the whole other side is 180. Yes. Um, but I don't know the specifics. And it's not really drawn to scale. Because it kind of really looks like the 80 degree part of our arc is bigger than our 100 degree part of our arc. I don't know about you, but I, I think it looks bigger. So our picture's not exactly drawn to scale here. I think that's all we can label here. So, <clears throat> let's look if we have some different information. And I'm sorry that you don't have another copy of this picture on your notes page. I didn't put one on there. I forgot. B resets the problem. Okay, B resets the problem. So I've got another copy of the picture with nothing on it. Okay, same setup, but we don't know A, B is no longer 100 degrees. Okay, so if we know that the measure of angle 1 is 55 degrees, and the measure of angle 2 is 50 degrees, find the measures of the four minor arcs A, B, B, C, C, D, and D, F. So, which one y'all want to give me first? Hmm? We can find AD. Yep, we sure can. So, what would be the measure of AD? 100 degrees. Okay, it would be 100 degrees because draw on these pictures, guys. I really, I mean, I know yours is already drawn all over. <clears throat> um, but when you're trying to figure these out, draw the old snow cone, okay? Put the two sides of your angle um, and the intercepted arc. So AD is 100. So let me put it on the circle so you can see that. All right, what else can we do? What can we find out from the measure of angle 1? BC. BC is 110. Okay. Alright, so that's all we can do with those two inscribed angles, but what can we do from here? We can use the 180 degree rule. BD cuts it in half, so AB is what? 80. Okay, it reverses that from part A. <clears throat> and what would DC be? 70. Okay. All right. Okay, one more thing. This is not on your note sheet. <clears throat> so you need to write this down somewhere else. Or you can probably, if there's a little white space down there to the left, you can stick it in there. Circumscribed angles. So we just talked about the inscribed. Inscribed is inside. Circumscribed, if you think about the circle conference of a circle, you're talking about the outside of the circle. Um, so circumscribed <clears throat> means your angles are on the outside of the circle. So it's actually a very specific angle. CAB, that angle is created by those two tangents from the exterior point. So we kind of talked about this, but we didn't talk about the angle. We just talked about the uh, two segments being congruent. We talked about AC and AB being congruent to each other because they were two tangent lines from the same exterior point. We didn't talk about that angle. So, we're going to talk about the angle now. We, this isn't on your notes, so just put it down in the corner there on your green paper. Okay? So, circumscribed angle is created by two tangents to the circle. So a, uh, AC and AB are tangents, so we can put in those right angles right there. And notice we're also given an inscribed angle. We're going to use that inscribed angle to find angle CAB. So if we know this angle down here at D is 30 degrees, what else can we label?